over the next 10 to 15 years, there's going to be a significant pull back to traditional trades. Hello and welcome to part three of our three-parter with my co-founder and accountancy extraordinaire, Sam Ewitt. There's actually far too many courses and far too many universities selling these courses that, that ultimately are not valuable. In this part, we're going to touch on all of the issues around finance that you should have been taught at school, but definitely weren't. Uh, you shouldn't think of student loan as a student loan. It's like an additional tax. Probably over 75% of people that taking out the current loans will never repay them. The people that are hoovering up are the massive corporate landlords and they are absolutely ruthless. Thanks as ever to Starbucks Accountancy for sponsoring this episode. Make sure to check them out if you need an accountant at starbucks.co.uk. Let's get into it with Sam. <laughs> What can people on normal salaries who aren't making big creative money do to look after their money that they do have and to take some proactive steps within the, the you know the means that you have? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Obviously, like you say, it, it's tough times out there for a lot of people at the moment. Um, you know, it's looking to cut costs, uh, you know, where you can. And obviously, a lot of people have already cut costs as much as they can and there's nowhere to to, to go it's about understanding you know what your rights are and and uh, around maybe uh, being able to talk to your bank about your mortgage you know uh, if things get really bleak you know there is kind of protection out there and you can talk to insolvency practitioners about kind of what your options are but that's in kind of some of the worst worst case scenario for the, for the kind of the everyday person it's i think it's going to be about riding the storm you know of high interest rates people remortgaging adjusting lifestyles maybe looking to pick up second jobs, you know, if appropriate, you know, is there any kind of income that they can earn on, on the side? Um, you know, but other than that, there's, there's not much they, you know, they, leave they the can UK. do. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, leave the UK as well. I always say this, man. If I didn't have family here, I'd be out in a heartbeat. Pay less tax as well. Probably. I'd be out in a heartbeat. <laughs> there's so many, you look around and you go to other places or you hear stories of people and they say, right, you know, I've moved to Germany or I've moved to Dubai and look, the grass is always greener. Yeah, yeah, Get me wrong. Sure. But sometimes it is actually a bit greener because the UK is a very tough climate to, yeah, we're to live in. A, we're in a high, very high, one of the highest kind of tax environments we've been in. We've got high interest rates and we've got high inflation, uh, high inflation in terms of cost of living as well. So, you know, there's not a huge amount of good news at the moment when it comes to individuals kind of personal finances. And, you know, it really kind of comes down to the, the tough message of wherever you can hunker down, earn more money, cut your costs mm -hmm. and and put aside what you can you know uh, whether it's if people you know they like to talk about sky tv or uh, you know any luxuries that you might have they might have to go on pause for a period of time until you weather the storm uh, and and uh, and then you know s see what happens you know in in the next kind of six to 12 months but yeah, yeah you're right we're in for for a roller coaster uh, and it's already kind of started unfortunately yeah so for young people who are looking at their life ahead of them they might be 17 18 years old haven't gone to uni yet you know, my views on university, I don't hide from the fact that I think for the majority of people, it's a complete waste of time. For some people, yes, it may be a good use of time. Um, but what's your view on that, especially in light of what we've just said? It's an expensive thing to go to university. People say you don't have to pay it back. You do have to pay it back, <laughs> right? It's a lie. Absolutely. It's a lie. And they will say, oh, it's a tax. Thing. No, no, no. When you make over 25 grand or whatever it is, you yeah. have to pay it back. So it is, and I might be wrong on that, but correct me. What should young people be looking at and thinking about in terms of university? Because it feels like now more than ever, it's it's an option that people should be at least considering not doing financially. Yeah, I completely agree. Like I said, when I made the decision not to go to university, uh, it was uh, challenging, you know, a little bit. But actually, I, I didn't really ever have any major doubts. University wasn't going to be right for me at that time. Uh, and looking back, it's the best decision, the best single decision I've ever made in my career was to get experience. Get started, have people that are genuinely working in the industry that I want to be in, coaching, mentoring, you know, teaching me the, the real life. And, you know, within our kind of world of being an accountant, you know, we have a lot of graduates come out of university and they think, oh, they know all the technical knowledge so they can just jump in and, you know, be really valuable from day one. And like they have a real eye opening process where it's like, OK, I actually know nothing about the real world in this space. I've now got to kind of start learning again. That's quite hard for them to accept sometimes. Um, but it, it goes back to that that point I made earlier. You know, for me, uh, there is certain careers where absolutely university can be beneficial. I've got no doubt about that at all. 
um, but there's actually far too many courses and far too many universities uh, selling these courses that, that ultimately are not valuable. You know, Use a good word there, selling. Yeah. Selling the they, courses because it are. is not free. That's it. So they sell these courses, you know, for, and I won't use any examples not to disrespect anybody, but, you know. Uh, Digital uh, culture at King's College. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> but they, you know, they, they can't be considered value for money. Mm. You know, even if you add in all the fun that you have whilst you might might be at university, if that's if that's your type of thing. Um, but actually, if you're if you're focusing strictly on your career and you're looking looking at it through that lens um there's a whole world and other of other options and like i said um you know whether it's even getting some experience learning on your own trying to launch a few businesses you know if you've got the ability or you know the resources to be able to do so um but actually taking an entry-level job you know my first salary was 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 crazy low what right was it? it was twelve thousand pounds i think <laughs> right it was, was probably my you? first salary i was seven i was just turning 18 so i was oh, 18 grand. twelve thousand pounds a year mine was well, I work for free. Well, I work for fifty pound a week, uh, food and travel expenses advice for my first summer there. Yeah, yeah, and then it was eighteen k. Yeah, so but, yeah, twelve. Yeah. I was balling compared to you, bro. Twelve k. Twelve k. This was in Jeez. like two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, uh, and so that's you know, about fifty grand in today's yeah, money. with inflation <laughs> the way it's running. Yeah, not far off. Um, but you know, it was like whilst I'm young and I don't have financial commitments right mm. now's the time where i can afford to i actually have a couple of friends that are thinking about retraining going into completely different jobs you've got a mortgage you've got responsibilities so like how do you go from earning your average to then going backwards to then go forwards mm, again hard, if someone says i'm going to oh you can come and take a training job to become a surveyor or a lawyer or an accountant or whatever it is you decide you want to do to further your longer term earning potential but you have to take a short-term cut that's really really difficult mm. so it's better to make those sacrifices whilst you don't have the commitments that you have when you get older so uh, you can take more risks i you believe know, i'm 18, such a 19, big believer 20, in that take more risks i was saying this to someone the other day like school is the most missed opportunity for young people to take advantage of you have no responsibility you have no kids you have no well, some people have kids you have, <laughs> you, you're <laughs> unlikely to have kids you're unlikely to have a spouse you're unlikely to have a more you won't have any of these responsibilities in life that hit you in the face financially sure. it is the perfect playground in time to experiment and do whatever you want because try, try you're never going to get right? that back yeah, yeah yeah exactly that no i completely agree so you know my outlook is i think 10 percent of the people that go to university should go to university and they go because it buys them some time they don't know what they want to do and that's another problem right a lot of people i was sort of similar 18 years old they don't really know what they want to do and they think i'll go to university because it defers the decision for three mm. years uh, and that's a tougher problem to solve because you know what maybe you do go and try a few things and maybe the government needs to come up with you know, a better solution, you know, to uh, helping people try different career paths, different work experience, etc., to see what really kind of gets them going. So, uh, yeah, but no, university wasn't for me. Like I said, probably the best single decision in my career that I ever made not to go. Um, earn whilst you learn learn off some of the greatest people get on with space. it man this video is sponsored by Starbucks Accountants one of the leading digital entrepreneurship focused accountancy firms in the country Starbucks looked after some of the biggest creators helping them across various different services from tax planning to bookkeeping and literally everything in between as I would say all of the boring stuff but very important to get that right and Starbucks will cover you so if you want to know more go to starbucks.co.uk to find out so can you explain how student loans work and what are some of the myths and maybe misconceptions that people have about it yeah for sure so the first thing to acknowledge is actually depending on when you went to university you'll be on a slightly different plan so there's there's effectively kind of three plans still in place at the moment um, plan one which was uh, if you went to university kind of before 2009 2010 sort of time when the university 3K, fees right? were 3k yeah uh, so that's like plan one and and the threshold at which you have to start repaying and some of the other terms about when it gets written off, et cetera, are all slightly different. Then you've got plan two, which is when the fees first increased. And then I think there's now plan uh, plan three as well for this you know, some of the kind of uh, the newer thresholds that they've brought in. But the general principle is that um, after you earn over a certain threshold, somewhere between 21 and 27,000 pounds, depending on which plan you're on, uh, you will have to repay 9% of your salary uh, over and above that amount. So if you earn £35,000, you'll be paying 9% on the difference as a student loan repayment. Now, I actually am a big believer uh, you shouldn't think of a uh, student loan as a student loan. It's like an additional tax. A lot of people, a crazy percentage now, I think it's probably over 75% of people that are taking out the current loans will never repay them because 
the percentage that you repay over the income that you have to earn and it's obviously attracts interest as well you'll never earn enough money to repay it so you may as well consider it that you'll pay that nine percent for the rest of your life or for the until it gets written off and i think now so just so you can just explain that a little bit so the interest because this is again something that people don't realize it's like with mortgages right the yeah. average house you pay two and a half times over the value of the for house sure, in sure. your lifetime so how does that work with the student loan so obviously you 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 get your your loan for the fees uh, for the the university fees then you may have maintenance loans etc i think the average student debt on graduation now is somewhere between 45 and 50,000 yeah. pounds uh, and then obviously as i was talking about the plans earlier the interest that you pay on those plans is obviously also um uh, different as well but let's say it's five percent right and that would be kind of modest actually in the current world because uh typically the interest rate you pay on student loans is linked to inflation it's mm. an amount above inflation they had to cap it because inflation hit 11 12 percent and they were adding like three percent on you'd be paying 15 percent. it's just impossible and, that, and that's per year per year so so at fifty thousand pounds let's take an interest rate of five percent uh each year that loan will be increasing at that point by two and a half thousand pounds and it will, it will also compound as well so if you're not repaying it it's the magic of compound thousand. definitely works two, both ways yeah it works both <laughs> ways exactly right so it's two and a half thousand pounds year one and then it's two thousand seven hundred pounds year two and then it's three thousand pounds year three and it and it compounds up so if you're earning thirty thousand pounds and you're paying nine percent on a few thousand you might only be chipping away a couple of hundred pounds a year so you're repaying say let's say you're repaying uh, 50 pound a month right on your through your wages so 600 pounds a year you're repaying but the interest is two and a half thousand pounds a year so despite you've been paying for a year you earn sorry you owe more at the end of year one than you did at the beginning and then year two it gets the same so well uh, the gap grows the gap unless you start earning more money so that nine percent most people don't right most people will stay most people they same. come out of grad career they're you know the early years it's gonna gonna the, your balance is going to increase so i've had some people recently check and they go i owe fifty seven thousand pounds so i only borrowed 45 but because their earnings and their yeah. repayments haven't managed to keep, keep even up though the they interest, have been repaying they have it, been repaying but the interest, the interest is, is more like that. than the repayments okay. so i really kind of encourage people to think not of it as a loan because there's also another uh, some other areas like people use the word loan but it doesn't appear on your credit score anywhere mm, mm. Uh, it doesn't impact the ability to get a mortgage or buy a house it, you know it, uh, generally speaking um, it doesn't count as kind of credit or debt so i generally like to say to people think of it as a tax it's a nine percent tax that three quarters of the country won't end up repaying but you will have to pay that for 40 years now um and and you won't and and eventually it will get written off but that's mm. a you know most people want to retire say at 60 65 you know when we get there it'll probably be close to 70 but um that means your whole working career you'll be paying an extra nine percent above whatever the threshold is set of at. whatever you've taken out of, of well, if you're self-employed obviously it depends you know on what your personal income is not what your company income is but for your typical graduate that takes a grad job as an employee uh, it will be based on your salary on your so, income. So, so, and it's nine percent of your salary. Nine percent above a certain threshold. So, oh, at the moment, it's Sorry. like at the moment, I think the newest threshold for the newest graduates is around twenty-seven thousand. They pushed it up. Okay. So it's nine percent on anything over the twenty-seven thousand. Do you figure. think people just go? You know what? I'll just keep the twenty-seven k. <laughs> yeah, but the, you know that goes back to my point around that hundred to hundred twenty-five k bracket. Sixty percent tax, two percent national insurance, nine percent student it's not loan, seventy-one percent. So if you're doing an hour's overtime at mm. work you know you're giving nearly three quarters of that to back to the government in one way or another it's disincentivizing right it encourages behavior to go yeah do you know what i'm not going to do that extra work because why would i i'm going to yeah, if i can make if and if you know these days i'm not sure but when i was coming through i remember at lab bible for example company that you know i had a lot of love for a lot of the people there but there were some problems in terms of how they pay people they didn't pay people enough yeah, like frankly yeah, most sure. of those media businesses don't if you're at that level and you go well you know maybe i'm content with that lifestyle i'm fine not making that money why would you go over the threshold? Yeah, and, that, and that's where, you know, the government have got to balance out the tax rate with the tax take. You know, there was a big study that they uh, reduced the top rate of tax from 50p to 45p. And that actually they then uh, more took money. more money because... Yeah. Do you remember the Laffer curve? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's that, that same sort of... 60, I think it was the, the optimum <clears throat> is 16%. 
and that is that generates the most amount of income because yeah. the more you press obviously more people leave the country the more people hide their money popular, right? but it's so, not popular because it seems so like people yeah. it optically it, it feels wrong that you make more with less yeah. okay, where are some of the places that are, that you see popping up as the destinations for people looking to pay less so the, the one for at the moment that's kind of creator friendly the, the one of the most popular ones we're seeing is, is Dubai there's a creator community out there there's brands out there there's opportunity out there because obviously you can go and work in the Cayman Islands or Jersey or Guernsey and pay little to no tax but actually it's not very commercially viable to to, to do so perhaps so weighing up opportunity lifestyle and you know tax rate like I said the UAE is 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 one of the most popular ones at the moment do you know what the tax rates are over there? so historically they, they would advertise themselves as a zero rate of, of, of tax they are now introducing some corporate taxes um, on earners over a certain threshold mm. but even then it's going to be relatively modest and mm. i don't think it's fully come into play yet i think it's being phased in uh over the next kind of months Which, and years i mean fair enough so if they've taken nothing yeah you're no, gonna five percent yeah yeah so they're paying yeah, but people have been paying zero percent mm. tax out there. and how do some people get caught out with that because some creators some business owners you know move abroad but then they don't split their you know their time in a way that's that actually makes them a resident like there are some traps right i mean what are some of the things people need for to sure obviously for? people see the headlines of oh apple don't pay any tax or amazon don't pay any tax or vodafone don't pay any tax and they come to us and they say why do these guys get to do it why can't i do it and it all comes down to the management and control of your business where's the business actually being run from and if it's being where run does that from person the uk live and work? yeah exactly where's the headquarters where yeah. you know if it's a person where is that person so um if you don't want to be a tax resident as an individual, you don't want your business to become a tax resident in the UK, which is when you're taxable on your worldwide income here, uh, you have to be out of the UK for a certain period of time. And there's something called the statutory residency test, which looks at a number of areas of your life. Like, do you own a property here? Do you have family here? There's a number of other tests as well uh, to decide how many days you can spend in the UK without becoming a UK tax resident. Um, so the absolute minimum is 183 days half the year six months so like if you're over that you're automatic uk tax resident and then it phases down so if you do from, 182 days yeah you, and you are in dubai for the rest of the year subject to the statutory residency right. test. so if everything else of your life is here your wife is here your children are here your house <laughs> yeah. you own a house here you work in your business from here in some of those days then it will be less than that um but uh it's somewhere between 182 and like nine days really that you can then spend in the uk depending on how many tests that you personally kind mm. of meet so but the minimum like i said is you you cannot be in the uk for more than six months as that's just a starting point property what do you think right we're in again high interest environment as you say they've been cracking down on buy to lets what is your view on property as a financial investment in 2023 yeah, it's, obviously we're in a really interesting space at the moment with interest rates affecting values. And on one hand, you think, well, actually that's bad news for property owners and good news for maybe people that are renting. But actually it doesn't often turn out that way because the people that are renting are also having to pay a landlord who's suffering the same problem. So we've actually seen rents increase in line of maybe sometimes more than what people's mortgages have been well, increased because the, the mortgages are more expensive aren't they the mortgages that the landlords have are more expensive and also there's more demand for for rental properties and there's less supply because a lot of buy to let landlords are kind of giving up on the space for a lot of the reasons that i mentioned earlier so there's people are selling properties that were often being rented out so you have an increase in people demand in people renting and you have a lower supply so the cost goes up uh so yeah we're in a, a, an interesting you know kind of space in that again there's there's no easy answer if you're average normal person who has a normal job living in very normal like everyday life what should you be thinking about how can you even what do you even do from a property perspective because it seems so unattainable now yeah no absolutely and i think um i think there's has to be an element of acceptance that actually you know the current generation the generations coming after are going to have it tougher than our parents generation and maybe even tougher than, than we're going to have had it uh, there has to be, an, first of all, I think an acceptance of that. There will be a shift. You know, we've got an aging population when the baby boomers unfortunately start you know, dying off. There is going to be assets kind of that are going to have to come back on the market. You think some it, good assets as well. Yeah, <laughs> you think you know, family home, they've got two yeah. or three children. They're going to have to sell that mm. to then split the inheritance amongst the... Uh, so, so I think there will be some more supply at some point, but where we, because we've got a, a, an aging population, 
uh, I think it's it's looking for, you know, kind of the one good thing about the current market is there will be some opportunities coming up for buyers because there's going to be, unfortunately, some some forced sales. There's going to be people that haven't managed to keep up with their mortgage. Mm. There's going to be repossessions and there's going to be um, kind of fire sales of, of some property. So there'll be some opportunities to pick up some property. Um, and, you know, maybe it's kind of you know, do or up a type property, except you're going to be in a, in a smaller space. But, you know, it's I suppose it has to be about trying to improve your own earning capacity so that you can try and get to whatever property it is you aspire to have but you know there is no cheat code you know like i said it's not like renting is protected from a lot of this chaos than than, than house prices mm. you know it's affecting both almost equally but actually i, I think in the more recently i think renting's actually increased by more than than, than well, again, the cost of, of mortgages yeah and that makes sense as well because again landlords for it to be a business you need to make some profit and it's yeah. nearly impossible for them to make profit if and the big shift that's happened know. is lots of casual landlords have given up because it's not worth their time and effort like the return on investment is really crazy and low because of interest rates gone up and the taxation on it mm. uh they're giving up and saying well actually i'm going to sell my properties and the people that are hoovering up are the massive corporate landlords and they are absolutely ruthless. Like they're just, there's no personal relationship at all. There's no, oh, I know my landlord, John lives five doors down or whatever. You know, I can say, oh, actually, sorry, my rent's going to be a bit late. You get kind of two or three strikes and then you're just a victim. They're on to the next tenant and they mm. up your rent by 10% every year. You know, there's, there's less of that kind of human touch that you get with kind of the more casual, smaller, family run, family owned, buy to let property portfolios. When you're in mm. the hands of a listed multinational corporation, they don't care don't about care. the individuals. They don't care if your kid's been ill or you've hurt yourself. You know, th there is no story you can tell them that is good enough for them to give and you a break. And they'll have always, at some point, been horrific to somebody way worse than you. Exactly. So whatever your situation is, it's not as bad as what Corporate greed at with. that level, right? You know, yeah. their only responsibility <clears throat> is to maximise profit for their shareholders. That's what their their job is. So they, yeah. will, they will do that at almost any cost. Yeah. And I guess to, to kind of end a little bit, right, I want to end on a, on a more optimistic note slightly because when you lay the picture out the uk is just bad vibes <laughs> and anyone says it but there are more opportunities to make money than ever sure. because you have access to distribution you have access to building an audience you have access to knowledge in a way that Absolutely. no generation has had before from your perspective what are some of those options for people who have had enough who are looking at this landscape and say this is not going to work for me. I need to do something about it. Sure. What can they do to make money in this time? Yeah, absolutely. I think obviously you're absolutely right. We're in an environment at the moment where there's incredibly low barriers to entry for kind of digital entrepreneurship, whether it's services, products, you know, uh, et cetera. Knowledge, I think, is one of the biggest things that access to free knowledge on platforms like YouTube and even TikTok. I'd still learn a lot yeah. from flicking. There is TikTok, no right? excuse in 2023 to not at least know no yeah absolutely and and detailed analysis and education mm. on whatever your kind of preferred industry is so i think that's great i think obviously the downside of that is there's a lot of noise and it becomes a slightly saturated a lot of people are attracted and wanting to do the same things people want to be the next tiktok creator they want to be uh, you know whatever's popular because they feel like there's low barriers and they feel like they've got a chance and unfortunately as i've seen in my own career the chances of being a successful content creator or influencer are, are you know a lot lower now than they were back then because it's just the pure volume of people trying right mm. there's so much more noise around um so but i think there's loads of opportunity to to, to learn and 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 it's low cost you know you can build a bit a website everyone has a phone everyone has a phone mm. and building you know whether you're using squarespace or you know a business like that you can get a, a, sh a great looking website and shop functioning for I don't know, probably a hundred pounds. You could probably knock up be with AI these days as well, right? Generative AI. Yeah, yeah. You can get a business from zero to one very, very kind of quickly. Um, I've I've had this kind of big insight that I think there's been a there is currently we're in the middle of a massive shift away from traditional careers where everyone wants to have one of these kind of magic digital entrepreneurship careers, and a load of people will have successful ones, but. I actually think over the next 10 to 15 years, there's going to be a significant pull back to traditional trades. Steady jobs. Steady jobs. And I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've moved house about a year ago and I've been trying to contact a bunch of workmen and tradespeople to do different, a variety of different jobs on my house. And they're all got incredibly long waiting lists. They mm. all tell me there's no apprentices Listen. coming through. There's no yeah. trainees coming through. Yep. And you think you fast forward that 10 years, if you've got the skills, whether it's you're a plumber, an electrician, a plasterer, a painter and decorator, you, whatever it is, a lot of these manual labor jobs that have become 
uncool and untrendy because everybody thinks they can go on and have one of these digital careers where they take a laptop to Portugal and earn loads of money. It's like there's not enough people going into training in those traditional trades. Yeah. I think there'll be a shift in the value because again, supply and demand, simple principles, people are always going to need these services. Mm -hmm. Who's and you have less people right? doing account. That's one of the. I got into accountancy at the end of the the, the GFC, as it's called, the, mm. for, you know, the, the last big recession, two thousand and nine, uh, and a lot of people said you'll always have a job as an accountant. Yeah, and it's true, right? The tax is, is getting more and more complicated. Everybody has to deal with their finances. You know, AI is coming. We see that as a great benefit actually for what we can do rather than a threat. Um, but yeah, I think there'll be a real transition back, ultimately, to the increase in value for traditional trades because yeah. they're they're not cool they're not trendy at the moment you know they're not got queues of people wanting to do them so uh but they're the most supply, needed but they're, they're, they're always yeah. going to be and again demand. supply and demand and if you think about what we're saying the logic of more landlords less uh, residential homeowners yep. landlords maybe with more money the opportunity then for tradesmen to charge more and make a lot more from those landlords goes up yeah therefore Talk to your those... builders and, and contractors at the yeah. moment three to six month waiting list to do anything right. it's like then you can put your prices up you know exactly uh, and prices have been and once those crazy. those guys become the millionaires in society which will probably happen They'll then you go oh, again. who wants to be a youtuber because exactly. everyone's trying to be a youtuber and no one's making any money they or built TikTok. a sick house and they made yeah. loads of money doing it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah or and then the people i think who are really going to win are the ones who can do both yeah I'm sure. a tradesman, but I was having an amazing personal. I've brand. seen a lot of that on TikTok, right? Where the, you know these un the careers or or kind of business you wouldn't traditionally see on social media having amazing success, showing off their landscape gardening work yeah. that they've done. The guy that goes around <laughs> jet hosing driveways, right? Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah, and yeah, the guy yeah. that goes trimming kind of uh, front yards in yeah. America, and he does it for free because he's making money through genius, the content yeah. because the cleaner people, as well, right? It's like ASMR, like people enjoying yeah, yeah. like the process of that. So those guys are killing it. Yeah, and that cleaner, there's that woman who goes to those people's houses where they're like hoarders and they can't do yeah, their stuff yeah. and she'll just go and clean for free yeah. and she gets millions of and views. And again, yeah, yeah, and then the business she wants to sell is right, right there. Right there, exactly that. So, yeah. Amazing. So more opportunity than ever, but it'll be the tr it'll be the, the boring, important, that's steady my, jobs. That's I, my I, I think view. the logic, the logic kind of makes a lot of insight, sense. They're yeah. gonna, the next millionaires are going to be builders. There you go. Well, there are a lot of them are already. Oh, they are already. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? All yeah, plumbers. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think that's the one to watch. Okay, amazing. Well, look, Sam, I could, again, bro, I, we spend every day together, but I could always, I could spend all day talking about thank this. Thank you stuff. for having me and congrats on all the success no, of this as well. It's amazing. Thank so, you, bro. Uh, thank um, you. And hopefully everyone got, I'm sure they did, a ton from that. That was like a whole degree in <laughs> an hour and a half. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, have a good rest of your day. Thanks very much. What an amazing three-part series. That was great. Selfishly, I love just sitting with Sam and talking about all these issues because we don't really get to do that as much as we should. I hope you guys got so much from it. I think managing money is so badly understood by so many of us, including myself. And to be able to get that precious time with somebody who normally charges a lot more for that insight was great. So I hope you loved it. Thanks again to Starbucks Accountancy for sponsoring this episode. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next week.